Okay, hello everyone. Thank you very much for coming to today's uh, AIWA Los Angeles Las Vegas section uh, special event. Uh, this is a, a very exciting uh, event and uh, it's fun and a very hot topic. Okay, so uh, this is kind of showing the theme of, of today. You will hear a lot of ex from experts and you will be able to participate in hands-on exercise. Uh, this is just a brief look of the <clears throat> agenda today. Uh, so we won't have any break because this is online event. So you are welcome, you know, you can just turn off your screen and, uh, uh, you know, uh, do uh, if you need to take a cup of coffee or those things. Um, so uh, during the presentation, it will be appreciated you turn off uh, uh, your, your screen and the microphone. This way, uh, there's a background noise won't get in. Uh, but during Q&A session, and uh, you are welcome to share. Okay, so uh, this is just, uh, you know, the, the speaker like uh, Dr. Ripken and uh, Dr. Maneman will talk more about those things, you know, hot topic, NASA just approved and your surveyor and the space at the you know, launch for the DART mission. Very exciting. And uh, Airway has been, you know, very interested in the asteroid uh, and the planetary defense, especially the Las Vegas, Los Angeles section. And just this month on our newsletter, we have a special issue which featured the aerospace R by Chesty Bonestell. Uh, you know, he has very fantastic, you know, uh, inspiring art uh, with asteroid and uh, um, planetary defense. You know, for example, this one, uh, you know, is a catastrophic, you know, thing hitting, I think this is Manhattan, I believe. You know, it scare people, but it's, it's you know, it's it kind of remind people this uh, the the uh, scale or magnitude of the uh, the, dis the disasters, and it was kind of published in uh, early days. You know, in the uh, AWA uh, Aeronautics Aeronautics magazine, uh, you can see him upper right, uh, and also as a chat with uh, Nahum and Dr. Menamed, you know, it's all everywhere in sci-fi. So you can see two famous episodes in the original Star Trek. Uh, you know, season so a season three. Ep, oh, actually, it's one is episode three, one is episode eight. And you can see the astro. Not only they have the diffraction effort, which they feel very real, realistic, and also uh, living inside the astro. You know, of course, they also wrote romance or those kind of things. But you know, and uh, Mr. Groves can tell us more. He gave a very inspiring talk a few years ago in this event. Very exciting. Okay, so just logistics, you know, thanks to AWA providing this platform, uh, the event will be recorded uh, and posted after, afterwards. And uh, okay, I'll, I'll be kind of brief. If any problem, just keep keep us uh, uh, connecting. And uh, if any issue, please try to dial in and with issue. Uh, the Zoom, please try to dial in your name and the type of your question in Q&A. And during the hands-on workshop, uh, Ms. McGinley and uh, Ms. Mayo. Maynard uh, will arrange for the breakout session for each team. Please stay in your team so uh, you can get the awards uh, certificate if you win the uh, competition. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I will introduce more uh, Dr. Maynard. He's our AIWA Distinguished Lecturer. Uh, sorry. Distingu AIWA Distinguished Lecturer. He's also a moderator today. He's a project leader in aerospace. And this is our distinguished speakers today. Uh, and Dr. Menemay will introduce or ask them to self-introduce uh, one of them, uh, one by one. Uh, so the, in doing the workshop, Dr. Menemay and uh, uh, Liang and uh, Monica, Monica will uh, guide everybody uh, in the hands-on exercise. And um, one thing I want to mention, because you know, to respect your privacy, um, automatically distribute your contact information, but this is very exciting topic. So if you would like to join further activity with Aerospace Corporation, uh, please send an email to the big one below, or you can type in your uh, contact in, in the chat room privately or public to uh, these two ladies. Uh, they, this is a stem.org, uh, or you can type in chat. Uh, this way is make it easier, then we know you are okay to share your information. Uh, just a couple of words will be quick. You know, Southern California is heavily aerospace populated. Uh, there's many exciting things. Uh, then we also, is the professionalization. So we help 
you know, clarify situation and bring the authentic information to the public. For example, people are saying uh, Richard Branson is going to space with Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2, but it turns out it's false information. Uh, Virgin Galactic is not going to have this activity. Uh, they officially announced it, but nobody listened. Actually, they are still analyzing their pre previous flights. So Sir Branson is not going to space on July 4th. But Jeff Bezos grew origin uh, mine on July 20th. Uh, so we'll just uh, slip over this. Um, there's something very important I want to say is, yeah, that has a very important thing is called, not, in, in addition to the distinguished lecture, a program that Dr. Menemann is, is in, we also have the membership levels. For example, uh, our check and chair, Dr. Jeffrey Puschel is a fellow with, with Raytheon. And uh, Miss Mary Lee Wheaton from Aerospace Corporation is a, a AWA fellow. And Mr. Steve Izakowicz, who's the president of Aerospace Corporation, which we highly uh, appreciate and recognize, is also a AWA fellow. Uh, so just go through this, just showing we have awards, activities, event, out, uh, STEM outreach, uh, high school membership, national program, and then we have Mars uh, Ingenuity, Mars rover, Mars climate change, terraforming event. And this is uh, Max. Max is our audience, the middle school student from Canada. He showed his 3D printing and CAD design. So this is our e-happy hour. Nuclear propulsion, space power. Uh, we also recognize people with membership anniversary. And uh, uh, one thing I really want, and this is Max again. He was showing the, uh, his uh, rocket uh, design. And we have speaker from India, and uh, uh, we have this uh, uh, Tusk Tuskegee Airman, African America, and again in sci-fi, sci-fi, you know, Mr. Gross Morse, sci-fi is very important aerospace. This is Battlestar Galactica, which features several African American heroes in a movie which was inspired by Tuskegee Airman. And uh, so, without further ado, uh, this uh, let's welcome Dr. Nahu Menemet, who's uh, from Aerospace Corporation. Uh, you can see his uh, outstanding, uh, uh, amazing, distinguished career. He has been doing this project for many years. He's uh, uh, from, uh, get, get his uh, uh, degree from Israel, a technical, very famous top university in aerospace, and also Georgia Tech. Uh, then collaborated with, with, with NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory as leading the uh, defense effort. Uh, and uh, not only in aerospace cooperation. So uh, thank you very much. Now, who is all yours? Thank you, Ken. Let me share my screen here. Um, and please tell me if you can see my screen and hear me clearly. Yep, looks like it's working. So thank you, Ken. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, and thank you for inviting us for this exciting event today which is going to be packed with very interesting talks about asteroids, planetary defense. And um, thank you for introducing me. If you want to reach out to me, this is uh, a page on the aerospace uh, website here. You can read about it and it has links to additional resources. Uh, and this event today is um, celebrating the annual International Asteroid Day event. Asteroid Day is an international organization, advocacy organization that is uh, designed to increase outreach to the hazard from asteroids. Uh, I'm going to go through several websites here that will uh, give links to additional uh, locations. I invite you to go and visit those different websites that I'm going to review now very, very briefly. I read about missions and about events and about their activities and we are one of the events that is registered under this organization today so you are participating in an international endeavor to increase the outreach to the topic of planetary defense. Uh, AAA is uh, very generous to host us today. It's the local uh, section uh, which covers Los Angeles and um, Las Vegas and so I um, invite you to become a member of the AWA and uh, participate in many of their activities, which occur almost weekly. Today's event is um, listed here with the agenda. And so we are going to uh, 
have some new component to the activities today, which is going to be an asteroid deflection competition. That's going to be followed by several talks by prominent members of the planetary defense, defense community. And um, so uh, it's going to be a full day today. So I encourage you to participate, have questions ready and ask as we go. Probably the most uh, inform informative website to visit is NASA's planetary defense page. It uh, has uh, links to many, many of the resources associated with asteroids. And for those that are not familiar with the topic, I usually go to the Q&A section here and say, well, what is planetary defense? Planetary defense is the term used to encompass all of the capabilities needed to detect and possibility the possibility and warm of potential asteroid or comet impacts on Earth, and then either prevent them or mitigate them, mitigate their possible effects. So that's the topic of today. Uh, I'm going to go over several additional web pages, but I'm strongly encouraging you to go and visit this NASA web page with tons of useful information. Part of NASA's activities is that JPL center, it's called CNEOS, very, very cool center focused on asteroids and comets with uh, breaking stories uh, as they occur and how those things happened and how they were discovered. We are going to visit this page extensively today. It has several tabs here that we will visit and several tools. Uh, we are going to have Paul Chodas from the director of the center give us a talk and participate in our workshop. So we are going to use this uh, um, resource very extensively. It's part of NASA's activities on planetary defense. And we also have created within aerospace a web page about uh, the activities that aerospace is doing. These include some teaching aids and uh, lesson plans associated with the California Next Generation Science Standards, which you can visit here and invite your teachers and students to participate in uh, educational activities related to um, hunting asteroids. We also participate in an IMAX film that was created by IMAX and by uh, the producer the, of, the, of the movie who is participating in today's event and he's going to give a short talk near the end of the event. So stick around to hear where we can go and see this exciting IMAX movie. Uh, uh, both JPL and Aerospace are participating in the movie. And NASA has several people participating in the movie. It's an excellent family oriented and worldwide outreach for the topic of planetary defense. We are going to visit the uh, NEO app that was created collaboratively with JPL and the Aerospace Corporation and use it in our upcoming workshop here where we're going to try to compete to save the Earth and see who's, which team is going to win. And we are also conducting some more serious studies. We use artificial intelligence uh, when it talks about finding those asteroids and in inspiring the next generation of planetary defense, I uh, am trying to inspire my own son to work with me. We have a few papers that we published together on the topic, and this is our first uh, paper that we published. So you are invited to go and read it and search our names, and you'll find a few more papers that we wrote together on the area of planetary defense. Uh, some breaking news, just a few a couple of weeks ago, probably, I think, when was it? Yeah, beginning of June, uh, NASA's Juno spacecraft uh, flew by Ganymede uh, and took those pictures of this uh, very large moon of uh, Jupiter. And the stunning picture shows the abundance of impact craters that were created by those objects in the solar system. So we are not alone here on the Earth. We are part of the family of objects here that are being hit by asteroids over millions of years, of course. But this is a testimony to the neighborhood in which we live. Uh, we can almost say that we live in a, in a shooting gallery area. And so it's one of those things that we should think about and be aware of. Uh, it's not just us, it's the entire solar system that is affected by this. 
Uh, we also can take a look at the moon, our neighbor, uh, with a simple telescope. You can look at the moon and uh, explore those different regions on the moon, which are very rich uh, in impact craters. Some of them are very, very dense. Some of these regions have nested craters within them. And the moon is literally in our neighborhood. It's considered to be our nearest celestial object. Uh, and it is definitely being hit by large amount of these objects, small and large, over millions of years, and probably still continues to be impacted by small objects today. So go visit this website. It's a very, very nice website uh, with a lot of useful information about the moon. And um, so we talked about other moons, but what about our own planet Earth? Are we being hit by those objects? Well, let's take a look. We are going, by, we are going to go back to the uh, CNEOS website, the JPL website, and talk about the phenomena that's called fireballs. Fireballs are those objects that do hit our planet and explode in the atmosphere and release some amount of energy. Uh, I invite you again to go visit this exciting website, the CNEOS website, and read about each of these events. Some of them are quite energetic, like the one in here. A uh, very, very energetic event that exploded in the atmosphere over, over uh, um, Russia uh, eight years ago. Uh, it is being detected by US government sensors that are designed to find uh, releases of energy through the atmosphere. They find those that include those that are caused by uh, objects that come from outer space, not just from below. Over the last three decades, they were able to find 867 entries with various uh, information that's available to this. If you would like to do some research and study those objects, these are physical evidence that those objects actually do impact our planet as we speak very frequently. Please notice that they are uniformly distributed across the globe. So there is no one region that is preferred over another. We are really living in an area of space which is uniformly uh, distributed by those objects, and um, there is a likelihood of any of these objects hitting any of the areas of the Earth. More recently, a new website was created to detect those bolides from a geos uh, geosynchronous geostationary lighting mapper satellites um, that look at uh, weather effects and they detect those explosions. Uh, this method was able to increase dramatically the number of events that were detected. And we are going to have a full talk on this capability from uh, our own aerospace, Randy Bell, uh, just uh, in a short uh, time, time uh, during the agenda. I'm not going to expand on this. He's going to talk extensively about this new capability. Uh, so how many big ones hit our planet over the years? So, uh, this uh, uh, Wikipedia, Wikipedia page uh, says that we have about 190 confirmed impact craters that are mapped over uh, the globe uh, over many, many millions of years. Of, obviously, some of them are quite large, as you can see here. So uh, again, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but I invite you to go and read about those different regions that contain impact evidence, we literally were bombarded by a lot of those objects over the lifetime of our planet. So these are all evidence that we have been hit in the past. Let's look at the most famous one, which is the event that caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. It occurred in the Yucatan Peninsula in northern Mexico, and that, that impact by an object about six miles or 10 kilometers across created a crater about 180 kilometers in diameter and caused, uh, in part at least, the extinction of the dinosaurs 66 million years ago. So uh, again, a very interesting Wikipedia to read about the evidence and the process that was used, the cratering effect that is involved with those impacts and the scientists that are involved with proving how they, do we really know that this was an impact by an asteroid? So I invite you to go visit this page. It's a very interesting page to read. And another Wikipedia page about the Chicxulub crater that was created there. 
more recently, uh, 50,000 years ago, uh, a, a relatively small object, just uh, 50 meters or about 160 feet across, uh, object that impacted the desert of Arizona, which is very flat, and it created almost a mile wide crater uh, that is a very interesting uh, visitor site to uh, come and look at the power of nature here, creating large craters uh, in the middle of a desert in this case, because of the condition in, de in this desert, the impact crater was preserved almost perfectly uh, since 50,000 years ago. Another very interesting Wikipedia page to go visit read about the location. If you plan a trip to the Grand Canyon, which I'm sure all of the uh, do plan, do plan, uh, make a little detour to visit this location for a few hours. They have a fantastic visitor center with large meteorites that you can touch, read about their origin, and just have a look from the balcony at this awesome crater that was created by an, an asteroid 50,000 years ago and take a tour around the edge of the of the crater. It's an amazing place to visit. Uh, let's go forward in time and talk about the Tunguska event. This is an event that occurred in the year 1908 over Siberia. Uh, again, about the same size uh, asteroid that uh, hit uh, Arizona, <clears throat> except in the year 1908, just uh, over a century ago, it flattened over 2,000 square kilometers of Siberian desert. Uh, and an expedition that was sent there a few years later to those pictures where you see the entire forest was completely burned out and the trees fallen in a direction away from the epicenter. This is part of the concern about the risk from these objects. If that explosion had occurred over any major city, it could incinerate this city of millions of people instantly. We would like to protect our key installations, both life and property, from these objects. These are very, very rare events. So we are protected by the fact that they are very uh, far in between. But these are evidence that they do occur over a certain period of times. And if we find one with uh, sufficient warning, we would like to do something about those objects before they can destroy a city. So again, another very interesting Wikipedia to visit and <clears throat> read about uh, uh, those objects and this event, the size and the evidence that it shows and uh, ample links to additional resources to read about this object, invited to visit. And then moving on in time, uh, this is the most recent impact event that was captured in very many video cameras. I'm not going to play this from Dutch camps, but <clears throat> it's another wake up call that told us that even small objects about 20 meters in size or 66, feet in size are objects that can cause significant damage and uh, to both life and property even today. These are events that can occur in our lifetime. So we would like to be aware of those objects and read about them. So please go and visit this uh, web page and read about why did we not detect it in time with our, with our uh, modern uh, telescopes and detection technology and what could we do to, to actually detect those objects so another very, very interesting Wikipedia page to read about this object. So this is evidence about uh, an object that did impact us and cause significant damage to our area. But there is a very large population of objects that are just zipping by our planet and making close approaches. Going back to the JPL Senior's website, which is again, a fantastic resource for information on the topic, they maintain up-to-date uh, information about those close approaches. So let's do a reality check and see what's going on around our planet right now as we speak. So here it is. This is as of today. We have a relatively, it, it's a small object, but not really small. This is an object of the size that impacted the Tunguska area, flattening and potentially destroying a large city. Uh, zipping by our planet today at a distance of less than five times the distance to the moon. Uh, tomorrow, there's a couple of these that are also making a close approach with us. And they are larger. They are in the dozens or even hundreds of meters across. An object that's uh, hundreds of meters across can destroy a country instantaneously. 
and it was discovered earlier this year. Uh, fortunately, none of these are impacting with us today, but they could, they potentially, potentially could impact with us uh, in the future. Some of them are quite close uh, about free lunar distances from us, an object about the size of the Chilea Bing object. Um, and some of them are quite large, maybe in range of hundreds or even kilometers uh, across. So those objects do need uh, the community to be aware of and pay attention and see what can we do to protect our planet from those uh, multitude of objects. How many are there today? So CDOs maintains up-to-date statistics on these and as of just three or two or three days ago, <clears throat> uh, they show the current state of how many objects and we are over 26,000 near earth objects that are known to us as of just a few days ago. Most of them are near earth asteroids. A few are comets. Some are really large in the hundreds or even kilometers size. And so they do put it on here for our own awareness. Uh, and if you want to do some studies and understand the environment, the space environment in which we live, this is again a fantastic resource to understand uh, the world in which we live, the uh, state of space. All of those objects that are being discovered are put into a database that is maintained by the Minor Planet Center. Each and every object can be found here with the parameters associated with it. You can go to the database and pick any of these objects and uh, pick out the parameters and do statistical studies and everything else to understand uh, more about the objects that are known to us. So obviously we would like to find them as early as we can before they impact with our planet. Here is an example of a mission that is currently on the drawing board. Uh, it's called the Neo Surveyor uh, and it is a space mission because we cannot find all of these objects from telescopes on the Earth, uh, which can only see lots of lights moving across the clear sky. So uh, NASA is planning to send this uh, mission in late 2026. And maybe in the next years, we'll have some people from this mission speaking to us and give us some details about it. But by all means, go and visit this NASA website, read about what this mission is intended to do and the spacecraft that's going to be used and the technology and the science behind and what sort of expertise are needed from the STEM community to help out with protecting our planet. NASA is also going to launch later this year a mission that's called DART. And this mission is handled by uh, the Johns Hopkins Applied Science Laboratory for NASA. And NASA, so um, exciting mission uh, launching later this year and it's going to actually test uh, some planetary defense technology. Uh, we are going to have a full talk about this later by a, the, a member of the team. So that's going to be exciting to hear about what they're going to do and what the spacecraft are designing for that and what's the purpose of that mission. Very, very exciting talk. To put this whole a picture together, we are holding uh, planetary defense conferences every other year and the last one was held uh, virtually due to COVID. It was supposed to be held in Vienna, Austria in uh, uh, collaboration with the UN uh, United Nations Center, uh, which still sponsored us, uh, but it was held virtually. I invite you to go visit this, this page. This page tell you about all of the topics that were covered in this conference. And you can visit the program that was covered uh, listen to all of the talks that we recorded. Each and every of the five days of the conference was fully recorded and is available here for viewing. And each one of the um, papers and talks that were covered in those five days are, can be found in those links. And there were several sessions and several panels that were only fully recorded with all of the papers and posters that were presented. A, a very, very nicely maintained resource of data about the last conference and previous conferences as, as well. So this is a, was run under the International Academy of Astronautics, uh, Auspice and, um, and the UN Center here. Um, so go visit this page. 
part of this conference was a, a hypothetical impact exercise. So again, uh, CDOs maintains uh, data about all of the exercises that, that we have held in the last eight years or so, with all of the data that was created to run uh, simulated realistic scenarios. The most recent scenario was created for the conference and it can be found in this link here, but we are going to use in our workshop the object that was created in 2019 because this object has unique features that are useful for our uh, competitive workshop. Um, to help out with understanding what can be done with existing technology, uh, NASA JPL and Aerospace Corporation collaborated to create a near deflection app or NDA. Uh, it has orbital mechanics behind the, uh, behind the scene and launch vehicle performance behind the scene of this tool. So this is the main page. You can read about it and look at those overviews. And this is the team that worked on it over the last 10 years from JPL and from aerospace. You can click on that app and uh, it's going to, it's a web-based application. There is nothing to download. You don't need to do any coding. You can uh, now, uh, and use this tool after some acquaintance. And I'm going to give a demo on this tool in just a few minutes here. Uh, Aerospace also has a version of this tool, which we have a special features that allow teaming. And with the teaming, we will be able to, you, we will conduct a asteroid deflection competition in just a few minutes. So I'm going to leave this uh, for you to come and read about what we are doing and the app that was modified for the purpose of this workshop. And obviously we are uh, looking for people in those different areas here, we are hiring. And I think with that, I'm going to now hand it over back to um, Leanne. Uh, she's our corporate communication uh, representative here and she's going to introduce the workshop that we have planned for you today. Thank you so much, Nahum. I appreciate it. I'm so happy to be here with you all today. Um, and Nahum, thank you for sharing your screen and bringing up a short video that we have about our corporate social responsibility. Um, but just wanted to introduce myself again. I'm Leanne McGinley with the Aerospace Corporation and our corporate social responsibility team. So Nahum, if you wouldn't mind playing that video um, that's in the link that... Yes, let me bring it up here. Um, if I can find it. Yeah, I think we got to play it in the um, the website version. I'll type yeah. it in here because we had a little problem with it. Okay, sorry. I, I, uh, let me just find it. One second, please. I put the link in the in the chat window. Uh, yeah. No, I have it loaded already. Just give me one second. Give me one second, I'm sorry. Okay. No, it wasn't this one. Should 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 not have closed it. So it's okay. We we can just skip skip through that video. It the chat it's in the chat window if anyone wants to see it. It's just a 30 second spiel about um, how we like to get out and be involved in our community. And, um, oh, yeah, I guess you found it. <laughs> okay, there it is. At Aerospace, our people are our most important resource. Whether it's introducing our K-12 learners to the exciting world of STEM, providing mentorship and career opportunities for talented college students, or giving back in our communities, Aerospace cares. Our social responsibility program supports our commitment to create a workforce that leverages diverse perspectives and experiences to deliver innovative solutions for the nation's space programs. Our goal, to inspire the next generation. Perfect, thanks so much. Um, we wanna share one of our main pillars. We can go back to our slide deck. Um, Poor Nahum, he's doing all the hard work here. We're going 
on a family vacation. Everybody is so uh -oh. excited for this. And you don't have to another video on that YouTube channel if you don't. Uh oh, okay, staff. okay, okay. And Let me like stop the video I'm here. So Sorry happy. about that. It's easy with Verbo. Um, there you go. Okay. And this is just a quick look at our team. Monica's with me here today. We don't have Lauren and Katie, but um, but we're super, we're small and passionate, but we are so happy to be here with you all today. Um, on our next slide, Nahum, we can just move over to that one. It talks about kind of one of our main pillars of our CSR team in K through 12 STEM outreach is to help underserved and underrepresented students pursue a STEM career. So to help us accomplish this goal, our CSR team works together with our scientists and engineers to find ways to engage and excite students and educators. And with me today are Nahum and Monica, and they'll share more about our STEM outreach resources that we have, including our Near Earth Object Deflection app, which was developed in partnership with NASA JPL. And we use these types of tools um, in support of our corporation's efforts to increase equity um, diversity and inclusion in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics disciplines. And we hope that you're going to like trying it out today as well. Um, so without further de delay, I'm going to turn things over to Monica and have her talk about more about how we've been using this tool and other examples. So Monica, over to you. Okay, thank you, Leanne. Hi, Nahum. And if you can just uh, do the presentation so it takes up the whole screen. Yeah, some of the features are a little small. Okay. Um, so this is the main tool uh, used in our STEM workshops, which is a physics-based web app uh, developed in collaboration between NASA, JPL, and the Aerospace Corporation. Uh, the NDA applies orbital mechanics and launch vehicle performance to approximate NEO deflection missions by high-velocity kinetic, kinetic impact spacecraft. Next slide. To further introduce collaborative teaming dimension to the NEO deflection app, Aerospace added capability to conduct asteroid deflection contests, which is what we're gonna do uh, a little later today. Several participants are grouped into teams and are giving increasingly challenging hypothetical asteroid collision scenarios to solve. The team with the highest performance metric wins the competition. So we'll, we'll run a, a few scenarios and see how we're doing. The team, uh, Aerospace has run nine of these uh, virtual and in-person asteroid deflection workshops for teachers, students, and today for the public. And next is more info uh, on our next slide about our STEM programs and workshops. Thank you. So this is us. Um, providing one of the uh, teacher workshops. And by using these types of tools to engage in STEM education, the goal is to motivate students, not only to be informed citizens, but potentially select a STEM field as their career choice. Uh, we know that STEM education se seeks to build competencies necessary to succeed in a global economy, as it prepares our youth to work together to address global challenges by employing critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, and also problem solving. Additionally, uh, STEM education not only promotes 21st century skills, but it also reinforces behavioral competencies that require perseverance, cooperation, organization, and adaptability to succeed. Next slide. And as Nahum already mentioned, uh, and I put the link in the chat, we have our teaching aids, which can be found uh, in the link that we're going to, again, put in the chat. Uh, we have developed these resources and aligned them to the next generation science standards for California. Uh, we also provide learning objectives and overviews, videos to STEM career connections, and also to 21st century skills. So you're welcome to check those out as well. Next slide. Uh, the teaming NDA has been employed in in-person events as well as in, on virtual platforms like today. Uh, the app is fully supported and accessible via both formats. And the benefit of the virtual events is that it can be run across regions and reach more students. Uh, moreover, 
uh, because the teaming NDA is accessible to all, it works well for in-person events that can be run post-pandemic in the classrooms. Over the past few years, the Aerospace Corporation has run nine of these workshops for teachers, um, students and the public. And three of those workshops were in person and six of them have been virtual. About 90% of our participants, uh, both teachers and students have expressed that their experience with the teaming app was excellent and all have indicated that they would participate in a future workshop. And I think we have some uh, previous participants here today. So that's a good testament of our work and um, uh, in the app as well. Uh, future work using the teaming app includes continuing to offer uh, these STEM outreach events on a quarterly basis for teachers uh, and students, and teacher training on how to run these sessions to increase student usage of the app is critical, as teachers have greater access to students in our target areas. The DEVELOP program strives to bridge the ethnic, gender, and socioeconomic gaps that exist in our educational system by providing these events free of charge for participants and highlighting that diversity breeds success. Aerospace is partnering with nonprofit organizations to deliver the programming to a wider field on specific occasions such as today, Asteroid Day, and during Engineers Week uh, and other such events. Uh, we're also creating an online request for educational groups that would like a classroom experience. And furthermore, Aerospace has created lessons uh, that furnish activities to educators to use in their classroom in tandem with uh, the teaming app. All right, next slide, please. And here we have some other resources. You can check us out online for more information about our upcoming summer programs. Uh, we have started our teacher series already, but we still have room for more. So if you're interested, you can reach out to us. Uh, so we have offerings this summer for middle and high school students, including our longstanding institute program now in its seventh year and two new programs, Zero Robotics, which is in partnership with MIT and a new academy program designed to give Rice and seniors and recent 2021 graduates uh, a look at what it what is like to work in aerospace. And throughout the year, we also offer an audience with aerospace where an engineer or a scientist will visit a group of students and talk about what they do at aerospace. All right, and if we can go to the Neo video and the next slide. Uh, Nahum, I don't think we're getting audio. Uh, could Lincoln be because of the... As well, if you want to check go. that out. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so this was a video created uh, to introduce our, um, to introduce the teaming app and introduce uh, the participants to our resources that we have um, on our website. Just kind of gives a rundown of um, of what's, what, what we have there for everybody. Yeah, yeah there isn't any sound, but if you want to check out that link, um, it's a good intro to, to give kind of an introduction, as Monica said, to the, the app that we're going to explore today. So, Mon so Nahum, if you want to just go to the app and, and explain that because we're not listening, we can't hear anything. Yeah, on the video. okay. Yeah, I think we are done here. Uh, are we? Maybe? No? Yeah, okay. thank you. We're, I think we're ready to go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Get some planetary defenders going. Okay. So we what you're seeing here on the screen is what we are going to do today. I'm going to give a live demo now. Uh, as to how to operate the app, which is what you're seeing on the screen right now, recorded. We're going to do that live, and then each of you will break out into groups, and very quickly we'll try to operate the app and save our world. So uh, I think the link there will probably contain the audio associated with this video. Uh, right, you can stop the video. 
Nahum, if you can stop the video, that would be good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And I think right now our next uh, uh, part of the agenda is uh, doing the workshop. <clears throat> yes. Okay. Uh, so one question uh, is Paul showed us uh, online by any chance? Yeah, he's here. He's here. Okay, excellent. So welcome, Paul. Um, uh, let me go to the app here. So earlier, um, let me go back to where we had. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the web page that Aerospace created recently. Uh, to support that uh, NASA JPL Neo Deflection app. Uh, we have added a, a teaming capability to the app that currently available on the JPL side, which is in here. So uh, the JPL side does not have a special button here that we have added. So we are going to, uh, by clicking uh, that area here, we are going to bring up uh, the app and the way I usually do it is that I pull it out uh, to its own uh, window. This is how this app shows best on uh, on different screens, which could be a loud screen or a small screen, laptop screen or a desktop screen. And I'm going to now do a demo of how to deflect an asteroid uh, by using by use of the tool. The one additional feature that we have on the aerospace side is this team mode button. When that button is turned off, like now, uh, it operates exactly like the JPL version of the app, identically with the JPL version of the app. When we click that uh, button, it turns on a special mode that allows us to uh, do a teaming uh, event. So let's do one for uh, for an example, and then you will be on your own when we are going to break you into uh, divide you into your, the different uh, breakout rooms. Okay, so what we see here on the left is a control panel. You are going to design a mission to deflect a hypothetical, a simulated asteroid that is designed to impact in the Earth, into the Earth. In this case. The object that we picked is called PDC-19. It is just one of a list of a couple of dozen simulated objects here. If you were to pick any of these other objects, a different orbit uh, will uh, be shown here on the lower end here. And so what you see on the lower hand is the orbit of the Earth around the Sun and the orbit of the asteroid around the Sun. And you can see the points where those orbits intersect with a potential for collision. In this case, uh, it's a collision by design so that we can then try to save the Earth from this point. In this case, the collision point is right at the center of the Earth with the best information that we have upon discovery. Uh, and uh, we have several launch vehicles that are available to us to launch a spacecraft to collide with the asteroid and transfer momentum to the asteroid and nudge it off course, just hopefully by a, a sufficient amount to cause it to miss the Earth. So let's uh, see how we can do that. So what are the parameters that are available to you? First, we need to input the information about the object. Obviously this is hypothetical object, so we can just input the numbers that are known to us best. In this case, the default is a diameter of 140 meters or 0 .0, uh, 0.14 kilometers and a density of 1.5 grams per cubic centimeter, which corresponds to material made out of porous rock. Uh, that calculates to a mass of two to the power of nine kilograms. This is a very large and heavy object. Can we really move it off the Earth with a spacecraft that will be launched with an available launch vehicle? Currently, uh, we say no. There is just no solution to uh, a, um, a spacecraft, a launch vehicle throwing or launching a spacecraft towards the asteroid. 
And that's because of the vast geometry between uh, the Earth and the object. Right? These move along very large orbits that are measured by astronomical units. These are millions of kilometers apart. And we have to find the geometry that will allow us to find a transfer trajectory from the Earth to the asteroid. So for example, I'm going to try to change the time at which uh, the asteroid is going to be deflected. That time, which is denoted by the letter D here, is denoted by this yellow line here. And by default, it starts at three years before the time of impact. You can see we have data for 30 years of distance between the asteroid and the Earth. Sometimes it comes close and sometimes it goes far by the nature of the distances between these objects. And T0 here corresponds to the time at which the object actually impacts with the planet. The blue circle in the middle here is our physical planet, but we must move the, the green dot outside of the red circle, which is slightly larger than uh, the physical Earth, because when the object approaches the Earth, uh, the gravitational pull of the Earth is going to pull it in just by a tiny bit, we have to compensate for, uh, for that and move it a little bit further away from the Earth so that this last minute gravitational focusing effect will not cause it to impact with our planet. So your goal today would be to move this green dot outside of the red circle. Let's try to do a quick demo on that one now. So uh, I'm going to try to change uh, the geometry such that I'm going to see a possibility to launch some amount of mass uh, with one of those launch vehicles toward the asteroid. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to change the time at which the asteroid is deflected by the spacecraft. By doing that, you can see that the location along the orbit is adjusted accordingly by clicking on this value here. And at some point, I'm going to see that uh, I have found some solution. I was able to launch a spacecraft of almost 800 kilograms to collide with the asteroid and nudge it by a tiny distance that moved it from the original red dot to the green dot. That's not sufficient. Somebody is going to complain. Why did you move this asteroid to my backyard, right? So we're going to attempt to continue with that. And uh, by doing that, we see that we were able to move it further out almost to the end of this uh, uh, region, but by continuing to go, we see the geometry is now becoming less favor, favorable to us and we are going back. So we want to see what else can we do. The other parameter that we can do is adjust the transfer time or the time of launch from the Earth to the deflection. It, the default is always 400 days, which is slightly longer than a year. But let's try to change this parameter to see if we can further improve our mission design parameters. And by doing that, I was able to move it just by a tiny bit outside of this uh, red circle and generate a missed distance of 0.024 Earth radii. It's a tiny distance, but hey, we saved the Earth and that's what we call mission success. So what we do here now, we are going to take that missed distance here, which is highlighted uh, in this informational table here, available. And we are going to divide this by the cost of that launch, which in this case was $200 million or $0.2 billion. And we get a performance metric, which is calculated to be 0.122 Earth radii uh, for every billion dollar spent. Your goal today as being members of the competition teams is to find better solutions than I just found here and maximize the performance metric. The highest performance metric will win the competition. And the way to do that is to change those uh, time of deflection and the time of transfer from the Earth to the asteroid, when we can see a number here, there is going to be an associated transfer orbit calculated from the Earth all the way to the object to deflect it. So which means that a viable solution 
was uh, calculated. And the other parameters that are available for you to change are the number of uh, launches. So we could pick, let's say, two of those uh, Atlas V vehicles and um, see if we can increase. Uh, okay, what did we say here? Um, oh, okay. So uh, right now I'm being blocked. And the reason why I'm being blocked is because I didn't set up the competition conditions, which Monica will explain uh, slightly later. Let me just give you a demonstration of how to set up the contest. Each of the teams will pick up a name or might have an assigned name. I'm not sure exactly how it was arranged, but I think we might have assigned names. Uh, and this will appear here. So you might just type in your name here. You can pick it up from a pretty kind list of names or if you are given an assigned name, you just type it in here. And uh, when you do that, there's going to be a name appearing here. It's going to be different for, for each team. The next step is to click on the campaign limits. And here you will be selecting based on the information that Monica will give you shortly, how many launch vehicles we can actually launch. Do not change any of the parameters under cost because these are fixed for this scenario. Don't change, don't change any of the numbers on the left side here. Only change the numbers then Monica will tell you under the vehicle max. So for example, we might start with two Atlas V uh, lifters that are available and perhaps two Delta IV heavy that are available and maybe two Falcon uh, heavy and maybe just one SLS. The SLS is the biggest one here. And we could select the times at which the, ob the object was discovered. When we do that, let's say eight years before uh, the, before impact, the object was first discovered. <clears throat> and the other thing that we'll do here is say, well, uh, how many launch vehicles can we launch at one given campaign? So in this case, I'm selecting four total launch vehicles and what's the budget that is available for me to expand for this purpose? I'm going to select $2 billion. And Monica will tell you how many minutes each round of the competition will last. For the purpose of demonstration, I'm going to set it to just one minute and show you how it's going to work. So I input all of the necessary parameters and I hit the set limits. And up on the top here, there is a timer. You see the timer is counting one minute and now my, I, I, I'm not allowed to move to the left of this uh, discovery time. This is the time at which the object was first spotted. And obviously I cannot launch any mission prior to this time. So don't attempt to go to the left of this line here. Uh, what you can do is attempt to uh, deflect the asteroid on the right side here and maximize the performance metric. So now I'm going to add another uh, launch vehicle here and Look at that, I was able to move the green dot even further away and get a performance metric of 3.1. And maybe I can try to do three of these. And now I'm hitting with the limit, I'm being hit with the limit that was set. No, I cannot do that. And maybe I'll add a Delta IV Heavy. And by doing that, I was able to move it even further and create a much larger performance metric of 4.3. And now my time has expired. That's where we are going to come back from the breakout rooms. Each lead in the breakout room should record the value of that team's performance metric number. And we'll see who felt the highest uh, value for this performance metric. So I think this, is, uh, this wraps up the demonstration of the teaming up. And the next uh, step would be to actually set up the breakout rooms and let Monica describe the very first round of the breakout room. So I'm handing it back to you, Monica, and to Ken to set it all up. Awesome. Thank you, Nahum. This is really exciting. So I put in the chat the link to access uh, the app, the Neo Deflection app. So if you can uh, travel there, that'd be great. And then we're gonna set our campaign limit. So what you're gonna do first is you're going to select 
uh, on the left hand side, the Neo PDC 19 from the drop down menu. Oops. So, first select the PDC 19. Very good. Thank you, Nahum. All right, right. then you're going to go ahead and turn on the team mode button up in the, the middle. Let, let me just let me just interject one more comment here is that uh, between those rounds, the best thing that to do is to hit uh, on your if you're using a uh, a PC to hit the F5 button and F5 button will reload a fresh instance of the app. So all of your previous issues, if there is any issues with running of the app, they're going to be cleared and now you are down to a fresh instance of the app which you can then start afresh. So that's what I've just done. Uh, the default actually object is PDC 19. So you don't need to do anything in this regard here. Only thing you need to do is go click the T mode and start a, a session once we get into the breakout rooms. So thank you. Go ahead, Monica. All right, so I put the steps in the chat. Um, so step number two is to turn on the teaming mode. Step number three, is leave the NEO diameter and density at the default values uh, for the PDC-19. Uh, we will not select a team name yet because you haven't been put into your team yet. So when we do round two, you can type in um, your uh, your team name. And I so we created some uh, some clever ones that hopefully you, you like the one that you're in. Um, okay, so now we're going to select the campaign limit. So if you can click on campaign limits, we're going to choose. Uh, so again, not changing the cost because that's specific to this scenario. Uh, we're going to change the Atlas 5 to 2, the Delta 4 also 2, the Falcon Heavy to two and NASA SLS to one. Okay, and then uh, set the time the asteroid is spotted or observed at eight years before Earth impact. Very good. Set vehicle campaign uh, max to four launch vehicles. So it will limit you to only four out of the ones that we put in um, in the upper part and go ahead and set the campaign budget max to $2 billion. Okay, very good. So hopefully everybody is there. Okay, uh, we are going to set the exercise time uh, to 10 minutes, but don't hit set, uh, set time yet. Okay, so just want to make sure uh, that everybody's there. If uh, if you're having difficulty, please let us know before we hit um, set limit. Okay, everyone's there. No questions. Okay, so now uh, what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to click set limits at the same time so that we're all in the breakout rooms together. Um, you'll be there for 10 minutes, okay? Uh, uh, Paul, Leanne, myself, and Nahum will be roaming around. What we suggest that you do when you're in your breakout room is that you choose somebody to, um, to share their screen so that you can see the app. And then the other team members, um, you know, can, can give direction as to the time of deflection, the vehicle type, uh, the transfer time. And again, what you want to do is you want to make sure that your um, uh, that you move that um, that dot outside of the Earth's um, radius there. Outside of the red circle. Of the red, of the red circle. circle. Yeah. Yeah, and so your performance metric, then uh, the higher the performance metric based on the parameters that you have, that's the team that wins. And then we'll progressive, as we do more rounds, it'll progressively get harder. Um, and so we're, 
that's how we're going to decide who the winner is. So the highest score is the winner. So the performance metric right in the middle there, um, the higher the number, um, the you know more likely you are going to win. And then when we come back from our breakout room, be ready to share um, your what you uh, inputted and let us know so that we can keep track. All right, so no questions. All right, so if you have all your uh, parameters set, go ahead and uh, in on three, uh, hit your set limits. So three, two, one, and I will open the rooms. And you can go ahead and join now. So you can go ahead and join your rooms and we'll come by and see you. And if you're still in the main room and would like to join, I've opened all the rooms so you can go ahead and click join. And you can uh, go ahead and move to that to that room. I can't hear you, Nahum. Did you take me out of the breakout room? Oh, yes, because Leanne is already in there. OK, so Leanne will be controlling this breakout room. OK, so who do we have? Actually, you can go to any room that you want. OK, uh, let's see which rooms are available to me. I see breakout rooms here. Yeah, you can just join whichever one you want. Okay, so I was in. You were uh, with Leanne in. Billionaire. Okay. okay. Uh, let's see who is. Uh, where is Paul Chodas? Is he? Okay. Paul is in. He's in Rock Blaster. Okay. Um, with your son. My son is in Rock Blaster as well. Yes. And I see Space Cadet who is there. Um, Dixie, okay. Robbie. Let me join this one here and see what's going on. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And I will move into one as well. Uh, Peter, do you want to go to any breakout rooms? 
uh, Dr. Landecker, you do you want to join any of the teams? Or Henry, Henry just Fried or Bob and Randall. Uh, if you want to join, please indicate it, and uh, Monica will uh, put you in the in the room. You, you might have to click accept when uh, she assigned you to the room. You have to click yes somewhere above screen. You have to click join. Otherwise, you won't join any of the room, even she assigned you. Uh, you can type in the chat box, or you can speak out. Let her know. Hey Jay Z, if you would like to join the uh, the team, please you know click accept. Uh, if you don't click accept, the, the assignment won't work. Uh, it's the same thing for Le Dr. Landerker. You need to click yes to join, and the Randall too. Yeah, any of you, if you uh, like to be assigned, please uh, let, uh, let us know. Uh, Monica will assign you to the room, but you have to click join when the pop-up window showed up. You know, I think Dr. Lang, you are assigned to the uh, Asteroid room, Asteroid Hunter room, but you, you show it's not joined. Maybe you're still waiting. And Dr. News too, and, uh, if you have to click join uh, if you like to join the team and you got certificate you know if you win the uh, the competition you got the, some gift from other boy so it will be interesting to to participate thanks ken i've got it running in the background so that i know what's going on but i'm not going to participate thank you okay no thank you thank you thank you joe no problem
Hi, is everyone doing okay here? Yeah, I think some room because there's no guidance, they are idle. There's only one, um, I, I went in there and I asked him a couple of questions, but nobody came off mute. So I, I wasn't sure. I see. Yeah. I think they're probably working on, uh, you know, on their own. Okay. They might yeah, be shy, but all the other teams are like working nicely together. They're sharing their okay. screen and, you know, That's changing. Good. Name. Yeah, you are right. It's time to change your name so they can come back to the uh, 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 the team up, uh, after this one. Yes. Okay, so I just sent them the one minute warning that they have okay. 60 seconds and then it'll in, in 60 seconds, it'll send them back to the main session. So you have the name for each team, right? Yes. Yeah. But hopefully, as you said, the next time you will be put back to the same same room. All right, I think everyone's coming back. <laughs> I see some people smiling. Were you, did I cut you off? 